we are in a in a society now where if you're not online, you're dead. Hello, my name is Renee Leith Manos. Welcome to this podcast, Where To From Here, featuring conversations about luxury travel and how it's changing in every pocket of the globe. Today, we're going to Vietnam to talk to an amazing Frenchman, Laurent Mitier, who is just an incredible man in hospitality, in luxury hospitality in Europe and Southeast Asia. And he is head of the entire group of the Anam Hotels. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Renee. Happy to be here. Before we start, Laurent, I have to say, we did some research on you and we found that putting hospitality to one side, you're a musician. And you've been on stage, is this right, with Duran Duran, and you've also met Sir Paul McCartney. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, (laughs) all true, all true besides the part of being a musician. I'm a a, a humble musician, you know, it's a hobby. It's true, I I did, uh, had the the honour to meet Sir Paul about 10 years ago now. And also, yes, I was on stage with Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran. Hang on, where did you meet Sir Sir Paul? It's a, it's a long story. I will, I will try to make it short. But basically, I was reading an article online um, back in January 2013. And there was an article about Wings Over America. Uh, they would remaster the whole movie that was out in the mid-70s. And yes. I was 11, 12 years old at that time. But I, I did watch. I was a Beatles fan at that I'm still a Beatles fan. But I was a Beatles fan at that time. And and, you know, the first big tour, Paul McCartney with his new band Wings, and they did this amazing world tour and also the U.S. tour, and they filmed it. And that movie, that film, I watched in the theater back in, in the 70s, you know. And, and I was reading that and say, seeing that the, the, the big launch will be in May 2013 at the BAFTA. That theater in London, and Paul, Sir Paul McCartney will be there to present it. Now, and, and he was saying it will be an event for friends and family only. And obviously, I'm not a friend and I'm not family. So, you know, but still, I thought, I, you know, it's in London. I, I have a dear friend, um, very well connected. And I WhatsApped him, screenshot what I read and said, you have to get you, you have to get me a ticket for that. You have to get it, get me in. Get me in, yeah. And so he replied, listen, I will do my best. I keep you posted. So January, February, March. And I didn't, you know, I didn't want to push it too much. I, I would have actually WhatsApped him every day. What's the update? What's the update? But I, I wanted to play it cool, you know, okay. but I wasn't. And so uh, one week before, I had to I had to travel to to Europe anyway. And I told, I told Jordi, my, my friend, say, do you have any updates? And he was saying, I'm still working on it. But, you know, on that day, uh, the, in the morning, the, the, the BAFTA evening is, is in the afternoon. But let's meet in my office that morning, you know, and then we, we see what, what happens. There was some hope, but no guarantee, basically. Yeah. You know? So land in London, go to Jordi's office. And I, you know... I'm still tearing up actually when I told this story because it's it's true. I really cried, you know. Yeah. So basically, he stood up. Hey, hello, hello, hello. He stood up, went to his desk, and gave me an envelope. And I opened that envelope, and there was the invitation to attend the BAFTA event. Three hundred people only, friends How and on family earth? only. How on earth? And I cried. I must say, I have to admit, I cried and say, "Oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you." Anyway, long story short, I show up. Only the idea to watch. The movie that I watched when I was 12, 13 yes. years old yes. with Sir Paul in presence, you know, that yes. was already mind blowing, you know. And yeah, and so that that's what happened. I, I got to meet him. I, I sh- shook his hand um, before when he, you know, he came, he introduced the movie we all watched. And for me already it was fantastic. I must say I cheated a bit, you know, because I approached him first time and asked him, so, Paul, would it be possible to, to have a selfie together, you know? And he said, well, you know, that's not really, you know, it's not really the, the environment here. And, you know, let's leave it that day. And I, you know, fully respected that. After the screening, which was fantastic, you know, we were all invited for a vegetarian buffet and wine because and so on and so forth. he's vegetarian, right? He's vegetarian. And, and so he's on that one. His late wife. I, I was already happy. I was already over the moon 
shook his hand and I, I tried to have a picture with him, but he said, no, fair enough, all good. And after, you know, I thought he, he's not going to attend that, that little gathering. But all of a sudden he stands there in the middle of the room with his wife and nobody bothers him. Nobody goes around and, and talk or anything. And I was a bit hesitant, you know, because I was, keep in mind, I was the only fan there. Everyone else was either media, talked to him probably many times, or friends, and, you know, they don't need that occasion to talk to him. So, and though he was there alone, and, and then I went over and I started to talk uh, about music, um, a few questions, you know, pertinent questions. And somehow I really caught his attention because I, I, I asked some pertinent question about, like a song, like a silly love song, you know, the bass line is, is very particular and singing and playing that bass line at the same time, it's not easy. Not many musicians can do that, like he does, or Sting yeah. is also very good at that. And so he, at, that caught his attention. And so he explained, oh, yeah, funny you mentioned that, because uh, even John uh, mentioned that back then. He didn't like the song, but he was impressed how it came across life, basically. So, so you know, Paul telling me a, a reference to John, you know, already that, you know, over the moon. And then I asked him a few other questions about the the encore, you know, the, the there was a song, the last song they played was Soily, a song that nobody knows really. And it was just, you know, and so I asked him about that. He said, well, how, how, you know, the, the finale, grand finale nowadays, the last song is the most popular song. You don't yeah. just play a song, just oh, keep them happy, just play that. And then, and he explained to me that actually back then the, the set list was not prepared, was prepared 15 minutes before, you just write a few songs on a hand, a few photocopies, and off we go. And they needed an encore, and, and they just played that song that they probably played uh, only back then and never again. But he said it was not planned, it was just very spontaneous, you know, the, the light, it, was, it yeah. was not professional. As much as he said, we thought we were professionals, we were not. And then he asked me if I, if I play an instrument, and I said, well, I humbly, I said, I play bass. And he said, oh, good on you. You know, I remember he said, oh, good on you, you know, but yeah. So, and, and then of course I made the mistake because he, I felt connected. I felt there was a connection and I yeah. made the mistake to ask him again, so Paul, would it be possible? And I got slapped twice, you know, I mean. It was so you know, oh my God, I'm wrong. Yeah. He, he looked at me and said, listen, we're having a lovely evening here. Let's keep it this way. You know, so I said, okay, okay, I understood, understood, you know. And, um, and then, um, because I was the only one, I was the only fan. I was the only one really yeah. excited to meet him and chat. But I had a 10, 15 minutes discussion with him. F fantastic highlight. And it was great. It was really great, you know. So, wow. yeah. So that was really fantastic. And Duran Duran was a, a different level. Not that I was a big fan, but part of the 80s. You know, I'm an 80s guy. I grew up in the 80s. You know, I was a teenager in the 80s. And Duran Duran were one of the leading bands back then. Yeah. Great songs, you know. I was working in Phuket at that time. And uh, he came on holiday with, uh, with his wife, Jasmine, you know, Jasmine Le Bon, and, and the three daughters he has, you know, lovely. At that time, they were like, you know, two, three years old. And, and he came and they stayed with us for two weeks and... On the first week, we came to talk about music. I can't remember how we came to talk about, but he said, do you still play? I said, yeah, yeah, I have a band here in Phuket, you know? And he looks at me and said, yeah, we should jam together, you know? And I was like, uh, yeah, of course, you know? So I called the drummer, I called the, I called the guitarist and singer. I said, guys, uh, I have Simon here, Simon LeBeau, he wants to jam That's with unbelievable. us. You know? Unbelievable. That's unbelievable, true. But yeah, and, and so he came over, we jammed one afternoon, you know, and again, you know, you feel like Duran Duran was, was kind of a band, a boys band kind of thing, yeah. you know, what we would call now. But, you know, the voice, it, the voice is there, you know, you can't, you know, you can't make it up, you know. So anyway, it was great. We jammed and we played a few songs. And then Simon says, it would be cool to go and play somewhere one evening. Wow. And I, I said, well, we Hallelujah. can organize that yes. immediately. Yeah. So, you know, it was high season over Christmas and New Year. So Phuket is packed and everything. And so I said, yeah, we can do that. No problem. You know, so, wow. so uh, two, three days later, we had two concerts in two different places on the same evening. One at the Sundown Cafe. It doesn't exist anymore. And, and one um, at the Safari Club um, near, yeah. near Patong. So we played three songs. One was uh, Come on Don from Duran Duran. One was yeah. uh, Notorious 
from Duran Duran, and he wanted to play a Beatles song, so we agreed on I Saw Her Standing There, you know? Oh, awesome, bright song, classic. Classic. And again, being on, on stage with someone like, like Simon, Simon Le Bon, you, you feel the stage presence is just incredible. You, you know, you, I, it's even hard to describe. Small, even in a small, which I imagine rundown type venue compared to anything here. Yeah, the, the first one was a very small cafe. The other one, funny enough, somehow the info leaked out. So we only knew later on, but the info leaked out. So for the second venue, a venue that can get two, 300 people, they had mm. five, 600. It was packed because the info leaked out and it was apparently on the local radio news that, you know, Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran will play there and that night. And so, so it was absolutely packed, absolutely packed. But, uh, you know, being on stage with someone that has such a strong stage presence was just unbelievable. I never experienced that. I, I've played music for 20 years on stage and uh, in front of reasonably a lot of people. Yeah. But the stage presence... We are amateurs, so you know you don't have that. But he was absolutely unbelievable, and that really, the the voice first of all, and and the stage presence was just unbelievable. And and so those are unique experiences. You know, the funny fact about Simon Le Bon is that that was in ninety seven or ninety ninety seven ninety six or ninety seven. And then you know at that time Duran Duran was not big anymore. But then they came back in two thousand five, and I. I, he invited me for backstage for his concert in Zurich. I was in Zurich at that time, and we met again, and we we talked about this time. And 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 Jasmine, his wife. So this was like eight years later, and Jasmine told me, you know what? This for him is still his best holiday ever. Back in Phuket, eight years later. That was a very nice compliment. Because he got to play at the venues, or it was the holiday as well you know the experience the holiday the yeah. hotel but also yeah there was a there was which also hotel was it there. which which hotel in phuket the, the, it was the surin in phuket the, at that then. time it was called the chedi the chedi phuket i was the gm there uh, and yeah. now it's called the surin phuket yeah i used to work for the owners of uh, of that hotel yes yes and wow. and Amazing, really amazing. Well, Laurent, really I have done hundreds of interviews of high profile general managers and owners of hotels on this series. And this is the first time I've spent the first 10 minutes talking about their brushes with yeah. the most famous people in the world, but playing music with, with two of the fa most famous people in the world. And what's interesting yeah. is that I also have a background in music and I have always seen luxury hotels as like a stage. And so for me, it's very theatrical, right? Because you have the backstage, you have the audience, which are the guests, you have to put on exactly. a performance. Everyone has to work together or the, the performance doesn't come out right. Don't you think? 100%. And, and you know, um, I always say that when people ask me, so how, how did you decide or what, what was the inspiration to work in hotels? But that's exactly that, Renee. I fully agree with you. You are on stage. You yes. are on stage. Yes. And, and um, you know, in, in, in a lot of back, of back of the house, what we call, but, you know, yeah. uh, backstage, I don't think we have it at the Anam yet, but I always used to ask a full, full length mirror with on top saying show time, you know, so that when before you 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 look at yourself, yes. show time, and then you go out, you know. But you're right, absolutely right. I fully agree. And that's exactly how I, I see it as well. You know, it, you're backstage it. and then you you're on stage, you're in front of the house in the outlet. It's a performance. You know? It's a performance. And it's a performance. It's a performance. Exactly. Yeah. Talk us through your decision back then to get into the industry. Obviously you love well, music. Exactly. So, you know, a young teenager playing music and and um, and I pl used to play football as well at that time. But I I knew I wanted to do something within the tourism industry. Yes. But I, I never had in mind it has to be hotels or anything. That was never the main topic. But I wanted to do something with in, within the tourism industry. So in Switzerland, I, I was studying in Switzerland. Um, I'm living in Switzerland and I choose a tourism school in Switzerland just to have a, a plenty of opportunities in the future. But my first internship was in a hotel in Bern, uh, the Schweizerhof in Bern, a five star hotel, uh, leading hotel of the world. And the GM back then was Jean-Jacques Gower, that time the president of leading hotel of the world as well, you know. As we said before, I just like the vibe. I just like the the stage, the the performance. The you know, I I just liked it immediately. Yes. You know, and so I said, actually, that's something I I I would probably like to do for the rest of my life. You know, so I did my internship there seven months and and absolutely loved it. 
and that was the decision based to say, okay, I, I, I want to stay in that field and I want to, to work in that field. And, uh, and then I started to work in, in Zermatt in Switzerland and then Middle East and Southeast Asia. And, you know, I've been in Southeast Asia now for 30 years, you know. What is it about Southeast Asia that you love so much to have stayed there that long? Various reasons. One, obviously, I think it's the quality of life, you know. First of all, it's the, the diversity, you know. Yes. Europe is great as well. There is also diversity. But, you know, when you grow up there, you, you feel you have seen it all and you know it all. And, and I wanted to discover. At that time, back in the early 90s, from Europe, direct to Europe, to Asia was very difficult. I decided, okay, I go to the Middle East first, Saudi Arabia, hardship posting. And I, I, I felt that this will give me the opportunity to, to prove, hey, I can adapt, uh, I'm flexible. And, and then, you know, Asia would be the next step. And I met my wife in, in Phuket. We worked together at the Sur in Phuket and so obviously then got married. And so that's one thing. But the, the, the main thing is, of course, the work, you know, the work, the work environments, the food, the diversity, the culture, the people and the opportunities as well, you know. Uh, oh, Asia. Especially right now, don't you? I feel because I've been living in Indonesia the last three years, there is so much opportunity in that part of the world, more than any other part of the world at this moment incredible. in Asia. It's incredible. You mentioned Indonesia, you know, one of the biggest countries in the world in terms of population, you 280 know. 280 uh, million people. Exactly. But <laughs> you look at Vietnam. Vietnam, 100 million people, young people. It's a young, there's so much energy, you know, yes. there's so much willingness to, to learn and, and to succeed, you know. And they're entrepreneurial. Um, the Vietnamese people are entrepreneurial. Very no much so, before. very much so, very much so. And, and and the food, again, I, I go back, the food plays an important part in our life. Asian food, especially Vietnamese food, very healthy, uh, uh, very health conscious uh, people. You know, you do appreciate that environment, you know. No, definitely. And, and tell us about yeah. Anam Hotels, because I actually don't know the group. So I'm very interested. Yeah, so, so it's, um, I, I would probably mention Mr. Hien, of course, you know, the, the founder, uh, our chairman. And he was having a, a technical education he has a technical education background. He tied his, his career to the air and travel industry, you know, uh, and he started this, um, this company, East Sea Group. And, and from there, it involved a lot of traveling. And, and because of the traveling, he stayed in a lot of hotels. And somehow he came to, to get to know the hotels from one side, obviously, from the stage side, you know, watching the stage. Yeah. And somehow he... He did like that and he thought, okay, you know, he, I, I must mention that he studied in Prague. Uh, uh, so he has a dual nationality, Vietnamese, original Vietnamese, uh, Czech Republic, uh, wow. you know. And so uh, he decided it's time to go back to my home country, to Vietnam, start a hotel group, you know. So wow. like, like, and what I like about it is that in, instead of thinking, well, you know, I, I have a nice piece of land and, you know, I have the funds to finance it. Let's ask a big hotel chain to do it because they know better and everything. I mean, what, what people think. He made the decision basically to challenge himself and say, okay, I will fund my own high class resort Beautiful. on Vietnamese soil by Vietnamese people. And I think that's fantastic. You know, he started his the Anam group back in 2016, 15-16. Um, the Anam Kamran in Bai Dai was opened in 2017 and got recognition worldwide, actually. There were, you know, because I, I feel at that time he, he went out of the trend of uh, trying to be too hip and too modern. That's what I liked about, and that's why I joined the company. I liked the way he was approaching his, his company, you know, uh, a timeless design. We're in Vietnam, so it has to have an Indochine kind of style. It has to have colonial charm, you know, yes. and then it, it becomes timeless. There I are do. so many hotels where were built 10 years ago that look extremely old now. You know, because it's not in fashion anymore. It's not the the the, the trend, you know. And, and a lot and of them could be anywhere. A lot of them could, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, and and so you are in Vietnam. It's good to have that, you know, to be part of that culture, you know. And and so that the design of the hotel, you know, it it goes it goes through through using domestic materials. You know, don't yeah. import anything the tiles, the wood, the imperial style roofs, you know, and so... How many hotels are there? How many hotels altogether? Now two, now two. We have the, yeah. the Anam in Kamran 
And then um, at the moment, I'm actually at the Anam in, in Muine. These two resorts, so we opened Muine just one year ago, exactly one year ago, we opened Muine. You know? So it has been extremely successful. So it's a very Indochine style, uh, charming hotels. Um, Kamran is bigger, about 214 rooms. And uh, this one in Muine is 127, you know. So it's a small company. It's a young company, but yeah. it's, a, it's a very dynamic company. Given the French history of Vietnam, which is one of the many things that I really love when I'm in Vietnam, who are the people that are coming to stay at your hotels, given it's such a young group? Are there a lot of French people or where are they coming from? No, so we do have French, but it's not our main market, to be honest. Right. You know, um, We are very, very strong with the Australian market. Australia is, is a good market for us, uh, for Cameron and Mouine. We do have uh, Americans, you know, that uh, visit us. Now, in Southeast Asia, Korea is a strong market for us. Korea is, is strong. We have a, a fair bit of Chinese market as well. Uh, and then, but the big bulk, you know, uh, before uh, COVID uh, um, came from Europe. Europe is, is coming back, Germany, UK. Absolutely. Uh, and it's so exciting that all of these markets are coming back. I've just been in Europe the last six weeks, which was equally yeah. exciting going that way. But Laurent, how do you see the future of luxury hotels evolving? I mean, there's so much change coming through. Yeah. How do you see it? A bit like the Anam, I have to say, we have to be, I think it's, it has to be personalized. I mean, it's a cliche, personalized, you know, but personalized means you can't be that big. You can't, people don't look for four, five, six hundred room hotels kind of thing. I don't think that's the future. The future is either small, intimate, you know, uh, and timeless. I think uh, the, the trend has come to back back to the roots, back to what, what plays an important role in your life, you know. And what is it? Is your family, it's spending time, quality time with your loved ones in, a, in an environment where it doesn't, that one is a bit, a bit my personal view as well. But I think people look more for quality time with, with the loved ones. Most of, of, of our guests live a, a, a quite a hectic, hectic life, you know, in okay. terms of work, uh, family, uh, school, and so on, so on. So I think the be able to sit back in a very comfortable environment, I, I see a, a big trend uh, change in that. You know, I've been in Asia for 30 years and, mm. and had the pleasure in, in working in very lux luxury hotels um, through, throughout my career in Asia and in Europe. We are in a, in a society now where if, if you're not online, you're dead. It's true. That's true. In, it's so sad, case. really. You know, um, when I was a teenager and I traveled to the U.S., I called my parents once a week. Hey, I'm still alive. All OK. I'm doing fine. And now with my dad, if I don't WhatsApp him uh, within 10 minutes, he thinks uh, something is wrong. I observe that with our guests here, they, they want to step back. Obviously, we have connection. We are connected, but they, they want to step back and, and say, hey, you know, it's a bit of me time now, you know, and I don't. I don't need to yeah, yeah. And Laurent, how do you feel when you go to Europe, given all of this change, given the huge amount of time, some 30 years you've been in Southeast Asia, how yeah. do you feel that's changed and how do you personally feel? Well, Europe is obviously still very close to my heart. I, I go off, I go back very often, you know, right. uh, I, I, I'm back in Europe very often. for to holidays. France? France and Italy. I mean, France, I was born in France. I never lived in France as such. Right. You know, I grew up in Italy, in the Piemonte for seven years, and then in Switzerland for 18 years. So my roots are stronger in Italy and Switzerland than they are in France. But I have to say, I have invested in Avion, you know, at the Lake Geneva border and so on. And so on. so we, we go back there quite often. And Italy, our family house is still in Italy. So we go back to Italy very often. And I play music, you know, still old band from 45 years ago. We still play music and we have concerts from time to time. So I go back to Switzerland as well. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. And how do you see Europe at the moment? I mean, there's two wars going on. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's sad. You know, but that's what we were talking about, Renee. We were talking about the, the mindset in Asia. Sadly, and I, I feel Europe has, has lost that, that need to, to succeed or to want it to do the right thing. I think we have become a little bit too, too sterile on this thing, to, say, to sit back and say, not my fault. And it's always the government's fault. It's always the decision maker's fault and everything. Yeah. And I feel it's, it's heavy, and, but it's not easy. I, I can see that. I, you know, when you're, you're back, you, you, you see it. Uh, yes. still beautiful spots and still beautiful areas and, and lovely people and so on but the the day-to-day -day life is tough I mean no, it's, that definitely. Is but it, it's true what you say there is a spirit in Southeast Asia at least where you know anyone can do it and if I just you know yeah. work hard enough 
Yeah. Yeah. Which is, has dissipated, I would say, across the West, not just yeah, Europe. Yeah, no, so you're right. You're right. You're right. It's It has. It has, definitely. And will it come back? I, I don't know. It's tough to say, but um, I do feel, I, I do see that the things have changed over since COVID and after COVID. Yes. Uh, it has been a tough time. It has been definitely. a tough time in Europe. Definitely. And as you say, the, the two wars don't help at all. I mean, really. No. No. And tell me, when you travel, is it in luxury? Do you ha- you know, hanker for luxury hotels and get your notebook out and tick off what they have got right and wrong? <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, well, yes and no. I, I have to say my best holidays are always back home in Italy uh, or in the Piemonte, up in the mountain. Yeah. I mean, not in the mountain. But in the, it's just, again, to go back to the roots kind of thing for me, you know. I, I don't really look for for beach resorts, to be honest. Yeah. I don't, yeah. because I, I live in that environment. You know, I've lived in that environment all my life. So our short holidays are mainly city city destinations, you know. It can yeah. be Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, which we, we love, Hong Kong or, or Singapore. So it's more a city life, you know. You need a bit of pollution, you need a bit of noise, and you need a bit of uh, hectic people, you know, uh, in your life. So we, we do enjoy that. Paris, uh, London. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so great cities, great Milan, you know. So they've got the Olympics. Paris have got the Olympics, July twenty sixth. Yeah, but then that's where you have to avoid Paris. I can tell you that one. You don't want to <laughs> be there. Ah, it's going to be a mess. You know, it's going to be a mess. You know, yeah, it's not going to be fun. A mess. It's, it's a lot of be fun Olympics. at the other time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that one. Uh, but a real holiday to to really relax is actually uh, back home in Italy. Um, home cooking no no restaurants no bars at home relaxing that's actually yeah. a book or, or so for me instagram is a very good tool because instagram if you put the if you follow the right the hashtags i feel you you get so much information you know in, in new trends or new restaurants or, or new things and i i love instagram for that i have to say i'm, I'm a big so fan true. of so, so share instagram. with us laurent three of your favorite hashtags to find good restaurants on instagram I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> ah, you really put me on the spot here. But um, no, it's a uh, one hashtag is trendy food. Oh, okay. I don't use that one. Food porn. Yeah. I use food porn, but trendy food. Yeah, food porn. But I think food porn is overused. So to trendy. Okay. Food, I, I have to say, I hashtag food London or food Madrid yes. or food. So and then I hashtag one thing is Negroni. I'm, I'm a big Negroni fan. Oh, I, really, I, they're I, massive I, in Southeast Asia. That's like the drink of Indonesia. Is it? Yes. Yes, they have, they have um, specials every happy hour, three for like $25 Australian. Oh, that's, that's a dangerous one. That's a dangerous, <laughs> yeah, that's a dangerous one. You know, I would say Negroni is one, you know, Negroni is yeah. of the world. Wow, so that's helpful America. though. I, I'm not using trendy food, so thank you. But look, I've talked to you all day, Laurent. You're so interesting. You have so much sure. to say. So we might have another conversation another time. Uh, anytime, anytime. But we ask all our guests before they go, where to from here for you? And it might be what you're about to do now, your next holiday or what's happening for the hotels. So where to well, from here for you? First of all, before I reply, I do love the where, where to from here. I oh. love it. I absolutely love it. It reminds me, and we go back to the Beatles now, but it reminds me, you know, the Ringo quotes, you know, like uh, yes. you know, a hard day's night or tomorrow never knows. I yes. like where to from here, where, but then here, you know, the where yes. to, but then here. So I, I love that, you know, that. that Thank you. Where, so this is actually really fantastic. I absolutely Thank love you. it. That could Thank be a very so good much. song, actually. That could be a very good song. That's true. You know? yeah, <laughs> Please yeah, yeah. take notes while you're talking to me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good. So where to from here? For the Anam, it's, of course, we, are, we have two projects in, in, in Fuyen, uh, two beautiful resorts. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. The the setting is it's one one kilometer of beach, really protected. So that you know it's going to be a, a private beach and one kilometer beautiful sand, beautiful pristine beach, mm-hmm. um, in two or three years from now. And beautiful. we have Axi Plaza, our our shopping center uh, and and uh, meeting meeting space for up to eight hundred people that we're going to open this year in in April May. So those wow. are the two big thing in in terms of work. In terms of personal, over the next couple of uh, months, uh, I have a concert in in Switzerland. Oh, you're performing? Yeah, we have a concert in Switzerland, open air, and and so I will take my holiday during that time, and and we have a concert. So I'm looking forward to that in June. Brilliant. Well, it sounds like you have a very full life. 
and a very round life, which is very impressive because GMs work very long hours, but you're still managing to do your music and to travel the world and have a family and have a wonderful time. I'm I'm fully aware, Renee, I have to tell you, I'm fully aware that I'm very blessed. I'm really, really blessed, really. Yeah. I, I am aware of that. So I, 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 I take it, um, I don't take it for granted. I never took it for granted and definitely don't take it for granted now. Yeah, good on you. Well, Laurent, it's wonderful to meet you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Renee. It has been a real pleasure. And uh, next time we see each other in person, it has to be a Negroni. Absolutely. And I, I'm going to come to Vietnam this year, so I'll let you know. <laughs> Please do so. Please do so. It would be a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you so Have much. Have a beautiful Bye -bye. rest of the day, Laurent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renee. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.